Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, today I'm building a fully reusable rocket. It's uh, named Half Thor, aptly named after the actor from Game of Thrones, the show that everybody loved. Everyone loved that show, there's no question. And what's nice about this is, like I said, it is all fully reusable. So every bit of it will come back except for obviously the fairings and the decouplers and uh, a couple objects that I break while using this, but um, what this will be used for is to build my Duna cargo freighter, um, sort of mothership in space. So it's going to launch up, I think, five launches, uh, because we're going to be also be using the ground construction mod to build um, the tail section in space. Uh, to make it just a little bit more believable or, or realistic, I should say. Um, so, that was a speed build of the rocket, and let's kind of just show how it stages really quick then. And so here we are on the launch pad. Uh, I think the carrying capacity of this is around 150 tons right now. Uh, the tail kit that is on this launch is, I think, 120 tons. And I haven't really pushed it too much past uh, any of that, so it's possibly could go more, but I don't know how much uh, Delta V you're going to be dealing with for your return landing. You can see that we've staged the first boosters here as they kind of just guide their way back to the KSC using the uh, the grid fins from the Kerbal Reusability mod as well as the SpaceX style landing legs you see there going out. They're just really cool uh, and I've actually noticed that you can see I have part clipping on the right booster as somehow it has a double set of landing legs. I don't know how that happened. Uh, it's not intended, I don't know why that's there. Anyway, on to the second stage here. And, you know, we're breaking off at about 30,000 meters here. Uh, and all I'm doing is I'm turning back retrograde and turning that off and putting on stability assist so I could just basically fire back across the same, you know, trajectory that I, I ascended on. And it's just important to make sure you take it off the retrograde so that you're not actually uh, moving in your new uh, trajectory that you've created as you kill all your velocity. And we're just landing back here. Pretty easy. The only thing that I found uh, with these boosters is these landing legs can be a little touchy and I don't really think it's the torque because if you notice when I do this the, before the hover slam here. I, get, I can bounce easily, I think it was more of a heat tolerance, I think the engines were burning the legs up and I was having issues with that. Uh, so when I just sort of cut the engines and let them flop there at the end, I, I didn't have as much of an issue. And this is going to be our third stage. And you know, just like in, in real life uh, with SpaceX and, and then them landing their, their booster out at the barge, the same thing here is it doesn't make much fuel sense for us to fly this uh, third stage booster all the way back. And so because of that, we have just off the coast here, uh, an aircraft carrier that we've positioned. And with this being one of the more upper stages, you have a lot more control than the lower stages. So we can do these pinpoint landings quite a bit easier. And as you can see, slowly approaching, is going to be our aircraft carrier. Uh, I'm using this from the aircraft carrier accessories mod, which is really great. I mean, I can land this down on uh, this carrier, and if I really wanted to, we're playing in sandbox, but if I was in a career save, I could then drive this carrier back close to the KSC for uh, you know more return fun. So. I really love this mod. I love being able to land this down on here. It's really fun, just the whole the whole thing in general. I love the look of everything. The, the mod is it's really great. Um, 
And then so this is us with our delivery stage basically just bringing us up to orbit where we're going to assemble all of our Duna freighter carrier cargo whatever we're calling it I'm not exactly sure yet and you know now we're just dropping off and just because that stage had I think the least Delta V we're just gonna use that as the rendezvous stage so everything's just going to uh, basically you know meet up there and then we'll just assemble everything on that point and then you can see our lander coming in um, this used to be a little difficult for me uh, what I've learned is have a high thrust to weight ratio when you're coming back in which if you're building a cargo rocket or something that's you know you're trying to get up into space you're probably gonna have a high thrust to weight ratio coming back anyway it just helps so that you can leave uh, a long tail and sort of what I mean by a long tail is you want to be overshooting the KSC so that you can just kill all of that velocity when you come back and sort of pinpoint where you want to land easier All right, and we're down. And we're launching our second rocket here. This is carrying our middle section of the freighter, which is basically just the fuel tanks and monopropellant. It's also carrying the life support modules because I'm playing with the USI suite. So it has some nomomatics, it has uh, some recyclers as well. It has a crew cabin, the M an MK3, uh, version, but it will not be manned for the first trip out to Duna, so it's not fully set up for life support. Uh, for testing purposes, though, I will be sending up a Habitat, uh, Hab Common, I think, whichever one is the multiplier within the USI suite. Just fast forward in here to catch back up with the tail kit section that we had launched earlier. Looks like we got a decently close approach here. Gonna coast in nice and smoothly. And looks like crack off a solar panel. One solar panel down. Anyway, I uh, didn't promise that it was fully reusable. And Trying to dock this middle section with this tail kit was quite a pain. Um, I kind of had to just beat it around a little bit to get it oriented right because there's no control on the kit itself. And you can see I sort of just rock around here until I get it to lock in finally. And wait till we get onto the right side of Kerbin so that I can reorient it. And there we go. We have the tail kit assembled to the midsection here finally and we're just gonna break off and deorbit land this part back so we can get our funds within the sandbox it's uh, pretty routine at this point basically just launching up dropping them off and landing back down There we go, uh, officially down the cost of one gigantic solar panel. And on to the third launch. This is going to be the front section of our freighter here. Uh, I'm using the MK4 mod for this, basically just because of aesthetics. I love the way that the MK4 looks. And I had originally downloaded the mod because of the cargo bays they are adjustable with a slider which makes it really nice when you're landing on uneven terrain uh, i could be wrong but i've used the opt mod before and i don't think that the cargo tailgate you're able to do that with so i was running into the problem where i would open it on une uneven terrain and it would cause the plane to sort of tilt one way or another uh, wherever it would catch and i could be wrong there might be a way to adjust that that I wasn't seen, but that was the issue that I was running into and why it ultimately it switched to the MK4 mod. You can see camera tools open there. It's bugged out on me and would not close for this, so 
Uh, it's a really great mod. It's how I got the previous shot actually of kind of like the wraparound with the plane. I love it. You can get some really uh, cool visuals of your planes and the stuff that you build with that. Uh, really great mod. And then we're just coming in here, getting ready to dock this front section. This was probably the easiest part to dock. I had the most control and I probably set the RCS up the best for this. Uh, like around the center of mass so this one I don't think there was too much of an issue getting it in here not like the last one one where I had to sit and, and try to orient it for it was probably took a good two or three minutes to get that to lock in before and so it just kind of bumps and locks in smoothly here and you can see starting to sort of take shape and look something like a what you might call a plane or big uh, space freighter. It's uh, it's getting there. And again, it's just rinse and repeat. We are bringing this delivery stage back down and coasting in smoothly and preparing for the last of our launches. This will be uh, the workshop as well as the material kits to go along with it. This is going to be the ground construction mod and what this does is it basically allows us to build uh, something in orbit so within that kit that you saw um, you can load up one of your designs and it will give you a certain amount of materials or uh, needed requirements to not only deploy uh, but then also assemble and build itself so I think I needed something like some liquid fuel and mono propellant to be able to actually deploy it and then it uses uh, material kits because I am using the USI mod so it is integrated within that nicely. Uh, the bad part about that is that material kits are heavy and so it was quite a bit to launch up and get up there. I think it required uh, it like 80,000, 85,000 material kits. Um, I overdid it just to kind of test the lander out here, so I think we have a full 5 meter uh, material kit cargo container there. And uh, actually I lied earlier, that is going to be the heaviest of the launches and it will be the heaviest of the landers as well coming back with the least amount of Delta V. Uh, we'll have leftover material kits from that, so it's basically just trying to push the lander and, and see how much we can bring back down to Kerbin if we have to. Uh, I think it lands back with 120 tons, which I've kind of figured out is the max landing capacity for one of these little uh, return landers. And there we go. We are ready to start working on the tail section here. See that it's deployed. I did that off camera and as it increases to the size that the actual engines themselves will be. Uh, the engines are mods. This is this whole series is very heavily modded. Uh, the engines are part of the USI uh, mod suite. And they are the basically larger versions of the nerve engines and I had contemplated using the nerve engines and trying to keep it as much stock as possible. The problem with that was I think I was up to around 50, 40 or 50 engines and that with the, the struts to, to kind of build it was just kind of putting the part count higher than what I was willing to do. It's rough enough uh, trying to get all this stuff up here and build this, but the freighter is also going to be used for doing a cargo module. So it's going to be added, you know, another, another couple hundred parts that aren't, you know, shown here. And because of that, I kind of had to keep the part count in mind and as low as possible. So uh, I opted to go with these big engines to reduce as much as possible. Now, the thing with the engines are, is they're not just big and overpowered, they, they're they actually less efficient than if I were to use Nerve. 
um, they are also come with a high heat cost so you can't fire them for long periods of time uh, unless you have a really good way to dissipate the heat so that's kind of why you see uh, some of the thermal radiators here they don't do a very good job I don't know uh, there's a, a an intended way within the USI mod that I'm missing but I also don't mind being able to be limited by the the long burns and, and sort of just keep this a little bit more balanced so that you know if I am doing burns out to Duna I think we're most likely gonna have to do two burns which you know for a freighter this size that seems pretty reasonable um, I like to play as balanced as possible uh, I I usually don't play full stock a lot of the times there's just too many of the good mods that I like to do or use while I'm playing um, but the whole purpose of like assembling the, the engines like this in, in space was just to keep things a little bit more realistic. We could have easily have launched that, um, you know, built some big monstrosity launcher, but it just felt, I don't know, somewhat more realistic and, and more of a challenge to actually launch it in, in sort of a Falcon Heavy style and, and, and especially to keep the entire rocket fully reusable was was really nice. Alright, and we're just coming back with our last landers. This is bringing down the workshop and the material kits. And like I said, you, you could see that the material kits were coming back with 120 tons here. Um, the bad part about that is I did have to fire the parachutes for this. It just wasn't enough uh, fuel left for me to... You know, there probably was. It was just that I did not really have this balanced well. So you can see it's really top heavy. If I would have situated that better, I probably could have landed that back with the fuel we had, but um, whatever, the parachutes had worked and you see all of our engineers survived. And I did point out, but the engineers were actually very important to uh, building up there. The more engineers that we have put up into the workshop will shorten the amount of time for whatever we are building. We're just collapsing the construction ports from the USI mod, which if you haven't used this, is really nice. You can see how it, it puts our pieces flush here and sort of just makes us one big ship. It sort of welds everything together. And you know, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope it helped you if you're deciding to do something like this or want to do a reusable rocket. And if it did, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.